What are you supposed to do when you have a failing flower shop on Skid Row? Find out in this week's episode of B-Movie Sunday. Welcome to another episode of B-Movie Sunday. I am your host, River. This week I watched a movie that spawned a stage musical, movie musical, and a short-lived animation series. I'm, of course, talking about the 1960 Roger Corman classic, Little Shop of Horrors. Now, I know I've mentioned Roger Corman before with my first episode, Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader, but being that he's the quote-unquote king of the quickies, you're going to hear a lot of him in these upcoming episodes. Um, He is famous for putting out movies that some people wouldn't, and that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. This time, it is an awesome thing, though. Little Shop of Horrors is one of my favorite B-movies. It's also one of my favorite musicals, the one starring Rick Moranis and Steve Martin. Um, I was in a production of it back in high school. I actually got to play the plants. Now, there are some differences between the 1986 movie musical and the original film, and even the stage production. The stage production adds in the songs that the film has, that the 1986 film has, but it keeps a lot of the plot and a lot of the... um, the dark humor from the 1960s film. Now, of course, you still have the same characters. You have Mr. Mushnick, you have Audrey, and you have um, Seymour Krellborn. And, of course, Seymour is working in a failing plant store in the middle of Skid Row, and he has cultivated this plant, which in this, in this version of the film is called Audrey Jr. Again, he's smitten by Audrey. This is a theme that goes through each version of the, of the telling. And this plant, it's a mixture between a Venus flytrap and something else. If you're familiar with the Venus flytrap, of course, you know they are a carnivorous plant. And so the ones in real life, they live off of bugs. The ones in the movie version live off of people. Um, This is found out when Krellborn pricks his finger, gets a little bit of blood in the plant's mouth, and it seems to really enjoy it. Um, The plant in this version is a very cheap puppet. But that's what makes it funny. Um, Like most Roger Corman films, it's not trying to take itself too seriously. It's trying to have fun, and it succeeds. It was filmed in two days on a budget of about $28,000, which for the 1960s was a pretty substantial amount, but it still classifies it as a low-budget film or a B-movie for our case. Now, when this plant starts growing, Mr. Mushnick, who owns the Failing Flower Shop, he, want, he sees this as a cash grab. He sees it as a way to bring more people in, and the more people that come in, the more plants and flowers he will sell. So even though he catches Seymour in the act of feeding the plant one day, he doesn't say anything to the public. He doesn't say, call the police or anything like that. He just lets, he talks to Seymour. Seymour says that a Venus flytrap only eats three times in its life. I'm not a horticulturalist, so I didn't, I don't know if that's an actual fact or if that was just used to try to, um, to try to quell Mushnick and make him feel better about what's happening, but it works. And so Mushnick lets him keep the plant, lets Seymour keep the plant in the shop. The plant grows about four times bigger after its first feeding, which was a, well, we assume It was a drunk over by the railroad. We come to find out that he's a little bit more of an important character in the film. The second time Audrey Jr. eats, it is the dentist. Of course, if you're familiar with the 1986 musical, this would be no surprise to you. The only difference is this dentist doesn't sing like Steve Martin. That's kind of disappointing, but it's still a very amusing scene. Somebody you might recognize in this film is the guy who is at the dentist when Krellborn gets there and he is the from all productions of the movie there is a guy who a patient who really enjoys the pain of the dentist and in this case it is played by Jack Nicholson and this is one of his first films and he recalls when they showed this film when they he went to the first viewing of it that people were laughing so hard that a lot of the dialogue was actually missed by the audience And he was very proud of that. The three other films he was in before this didn't get quite the same review or same reaction as this one did. And he was very happy about that. And it, of course, helped his career um, in the long run. But Seymour, of course, takes care of the dentist. And when he starts feeding them to 
the um, the plant. All you see is the lifeless body being thrown into the plant. You know, there's no blood, there's no guts. The version I watched was in black and white. On Hulu Plus, there is a colorized version. I've yet to watch this. I I like watching black and white films in their original black and white. I'm not against the colorization of films like some movie reviewers are, but the version I have in my personal collections in black and white, so that's the version that I watched for this review. I'm sure none of the plot line changes. Mr. Yellow Shirt, who is a kind of minor character, a minor character who has a big influence in the movie, um, probably makes more sense when you actually see him with a yellow shirt. But besides that, I think it's actually funnier watching it in black and white and him being called Mr. Yellow Shirt. And the fact that it is a flower shop and all you see is these gray and white flowers. I think it makes it even better. A couple of the other victims that the plant takes is someone who is trying to rob the plant shop while Mushnik is standing guard. He is actually played by the writer of the movie and also the one who voiced and maneuvered the plant puppet. And the last victim is a... um. I'm not sure how they would word this in the 1960s, but we'll say a, um, a call girl, we could say, um, a lady of the night, someone who, each person who is eaten by the plant is someone who would, society would not mind being eaten by a giant plant. This is a theme that goes on into the stage production and into the 1986 musical, of course. Um, you have the dentist who likes to cause pain to people. You have the person who you think is a drunk, but again, you, later you find out wasn't. Um, you have the person who is trying to rob the store, and you have the woman of the night. So these are people who most society would not miss. So they're trying to make it moral what the plants, is. they're trying to make it moral that Seymour is killing or that the plant is killing these particular kinds of people. Um, take that for what you will. It, in my opinion, it's just a movie. I'm not trying to make any big philosophical statement or read anything too much into this film. Um, one big difference between the 1960 film and the 1986 musical is the ending. In the 1986 musical, we're led to believe that it's a nice, happy ending. You know, Seymour survives, everybody goes on happy, he ends up with Audrey. In the 1960s film, spoiler warning here, um, but you'll still enjoy watching it even knowing this, it's not so much a happy ending. And the stage musical um, keeps with this. The plant eats certain people, and at the end, when the buds bloom, the faces of the people can be seen. In this case, you know, the less reputable people, and also one of our main characters. I, I was about to give away who it was going to be, but I'm not going to. Uh, if you've seen the stage production, you know kind of what happens, but if you've only seen the film starring Rick Moranis, then you're going to be in for a surprise. Um, this is a great, great film. I believe that it's one you could watch with your kids, let's say 13 and up. It's because it was in 1960, it's no longer copywritten and it um, no longer holds the same sort of MPAA rating like most movies nowadays do. I would probably rate it PG-13 just because there are some things that smaller children may find um, scary. More than likely, though, they just won't understand what's going on. Um, the props and things used were very fake looking, like the arms and legs you can tell aren't real. Um, I don't expect a five-year-old to understand that they're fake, though. This movie was filmed in two days with a budget of, you know, like I said, about $28,000. Um, he did a great job, though. Um, he used prop sets and things like that that he had from a previous film, and it really worked out. This is a film that I would give five stars to. I own it myself. I would recommend everybody buy it. You can get it very inexpensively on Amazon. Um, you can buy it on DVD. You can buy it on VHS still if you want. You can buy the colorized version or the black and white version. A lot of places, including Amazon, have multi-packs where you get Little Shop of Horrors, but then maybe you'll get a couple other um, old Jack Nicholson movies or you'll get a couple other Roger Corman movies. I've seen them for seven, ten bucks. Uh, the version I have has Little Shop of Horrors and The um, Brain That Wouldn't Die which is another one, of course, that I'll be reviewing in the, in the future. But I wanted to, you know, give everybody a nice way to start their holidays. This would make an excellent stocking stuffer. Just putting that out there. 
Um, if you don't want to buy it, again, you can watch it on Amazon Prime for free, or you can rent it on Amazon Video for, I believe, $2.99. It's only an SD. Um, colorized version or the black and white version. I believe the black and white version is the only free one on Amazon Prime. On Hulu, you can watch it in color or in black and white, as long as you have a subscription there. I recommend it, though. You're going to want to watch it more than once. Um, you're going to want to watch it once just for the, the story. Second time you watch it is going to be for the humor, and the third time you watch it is just going to be because you want to show your friends, you want to show your family this great movie that you found. I'm No surprise, I'm going to give it five out of five stars. Buy it, watch it, lend it to a friend, buy another copy so you can just keep spreading the word of Little Shop of Horrors. It'll give you a newfound respect for the 86 musical, and if you haven't seen the 86 musical, go see it also. Um, I recommend buying that one, but if not, there are millions of places you can you can find to watch it too. So go enjoy Little Shop of Horrors, and um, remember you can find us on Facebook. You can go to facebookcom slash podcast or facebookcom slash studios. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm on twitter.com slash geekulele, G-E-E-K-U-L-E-L-E. -E -L -E. Um, I'm always open for suggestions on films. I've got Netflix, I've got Hulu, I've got Amazon Prime, I've got HBO Go. Um, those are the free ones that I have access to, but if you know of a film that you just I just need to see, and it's something that I can rent on Amazon or rent through Vudu or some other online streaming service, Recommend it to me. Let me know. Um, free, cheap is good, but free is better, as they say. You can email me suggestions, comments, questions, anything like that at bmoviesundaypodcast at gmail.com. You can find me at atomicrocketstudios.com slash shows, and that will lead you to the past episodes. It'll lead you to the YouTube version of this show, where it's the same show, but you get to see my pretty face and my pretty cool beard while I'm talking here. You can also find the RSS feed there, so you can subscribe to the podcast and a link to the iTunes, the iTunes link. Um, please go to iTunes, rank and review us, give us five stars. I'd really appreciate that. It helps us um, get out there, you know, spread the word. I want to provide a service where B movies get the fair shot they deserve by being ranked and reviewed. Not everybody appreciates the um, bad movies. I'm using quotation fingers here for those listening the way I do. And um, I believe that there are some good ones out there. And Little Shop of Horrors is probably towards the top of the list of ones that I would recommend. Next week, I'm going to do a, um, not a Christmas one, but I'm going to give you a little holiday sneak peek here, a little holiday treat to um, get us ready for the Christmas season. But until then, I hope you guys had an excellent Thanksgiving holiday, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great day, and enjoy the movies.